Hi, and welcome to Serverless Migration Station, a serverless expedition mini-series dedicated to helping developers modernize their apps to using one of the latest features on one of our serverless compute platforms. Today, my colleague Martin and I will hop on our little friend part of the train to continue our journey migrating from App Engine Task you pull tasks to Cloud PubSub. Sounds great, and happy to be here, Wes. Uh, now, last time in Module 18, we added App Engine Task you pull tasks to the Module 1 sample app. Uh, what are we doing today? That's right, Martin. For those who haven't seen the Module 18 video or completed its code lab, pause here to do so because we pick up from where Module 18 leaves off. Today's Module 19 video is about moving those pull tasks to Cloud PubSub, as well as migrating from App Engine NDB to Cloud NDB. These and other links are down in the description below. Now, wait, Wes. Uh, did you say we're migrating from App Engine NDB and App Engine Task Queues to Cloud NDB and Cloud PubSub? Uh, isn't that two migrations? That's right, Martin. Modernizing means moving off of legacy built-in services like NDB and TaskU to standalone services like Cloud NDB and PubSub. While we are doing both migrations today, we're only focused on TaskU to PubSub because the Cloud NDB migration is covered in Module 2. You also get the option of upgrading to Python 3 or stay on Python 2 for now until you're ready. The Module 19 app is Python 2 and 3 compatible. That's great that people can stay on Python 2 until they're ready to upgrade to Python 3. Now, with regards to NDB, where can our viewers learn more about the Module 2 migration to Cloud NDB? The Module 2 video and code lab are great resources to get familiar with that migration. We're focused on tasking migration the rest of the way. OK. I know we added pull tasks in Module 18 and caught up with that Module 2 migration to Cloud NDB. Now, how do we migrate this app to PubSub? The Module 18 app displayed both the top visitors as well as the most recent visits. So we're keeping the identical functionality, but switching out App Engine services for standalone cloud products, meaning end users won't notice any difference. The Module 19 Python 2 or 3 app will behave exactly like the Module 18 Python 2 app. Sounds good. Uh, now you're going to point me to the code and the code labs so I can do this by hand while you're guiding us, right? Ah, uh, you'd think so, but not yet. There's some setup we need to take care of first. Uh, OK, uh, what? Like what? Well, because we're using new cloud services, they have to be enabled first. Can't run any code without doing that. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, so what are we enabling? And most importantly, how do we do it? Well, in addition to PubSub, recognize that App Engine Data Store matured into Cloud Data Store, and the Cloud NDB library is how Python developers access it. So to use Cloud Data Store and PubSub, they should both be enabled. You can do it one at a time from the Cloud Console where you go to each API's page and click the Enable button like you see on the PubSub page here. Or you can do it from the command line. Definitely check out the code lab, which provides all the details. Great. Uh, I was able to enable both services. Uh, what else do I have to do uh, before we update the sample app? Well, next we have to get a good understanding of how the terminology changes when switching from task queue pull tasks to Cloud PubSub. With task queue, data goes into pull queues. With PubSub, data goes into topics. Task queue pull tasks are called messages in PubSub. With task queue, workers access pull tasks. With PubSub, subscribers receive messages. Leasing a pull task is the same as pulling a message from a PubSub topic via subscription. Deleting a task from a pull queue when you're done is analogous to acknowledging a PubSub message. Does that all make sense? Yeah, uh, that was a really useful overview, Wes. Uh, and, and I really like that table you showed us. Um, now that I know this, is there any more setup we need to do? Yes. Per the chart we just covered, we need a topic and a subscriber in order for our app to work. There are three ways to creating these resources, from the Cloud Console, on the command line, or with code using the PubSub API. That's a lot of options, Wes. Uh, which one are we using? Well, good question, Martin. Well, it's pretty straightforward to do it in the Cloud Console. There are separate dialogues for creating topics and subscriptions. But you know I prefer the terminal, so I would do it with this pair of command line commands. The last option is to do it from code using the PubSub API. The Module 19 repo has a sample Python script called maker.py that does it. Here you see it's got separate functions for creating each resource. We've provided a link in case you want to check it out. All that's useful. Uh, I picked one, and now I have both a topic and a subscription. Can we code yet? 
For sure. Here and below are links to the repo and code lab. We'll start with the module 18 code and finish with what's in the module 19 folder. Pause if you need to find your module 18 code or copy it from the repo. OK, ready? Let's go to the computer and do this migration. For each migration, let's ensure we're starting with a working app. In this case, the module 18 sample. Go to the folder where your code is and delete the lib folder if you have one. Run the pip install command to install the third-party libraries into lib. Python 2 developers know self-bundling like this is required by App Engine. And one big benefit to upgrading to Python 3 is that you no longer have to do this. Now deploy to the cloud with gcloud app deploy. The app should show the top visitors and the most recent visits. Now that we have a working app, we can replace its use of pull tasks with Cloud PubSub. Next is configuration. The first step is straightforward. The queue.yaml file is to create our pull queue. Since we're moving from task queue to PubSub, there's no need for it, so delete it. The module 18 requirements.txt file is listed only with Flask. We're migrating to Cloud NDB and PubSub, so add those client libraries here too. Next is app.yaml. What we do with app.yaml differs depending on whether we stay on Python 2 or upgrade to Python 3. Let's start with Python 2. Adding use of cloud client libraries requires two built-in libraries, setup tools, and gRPC I.O. These are already available for you on App Engine servers, so all you do is add or update the library section to list them with a preferred version or latest for the latest available. If you're porting the sample app to Python 3, you're removing stuff. Delete everything except for the runtime directive changing it to a supported Python 3 version, say 3.10. See the code lab for more details on these updates to app.yaml. For App Engine config.py, things also differ between Python 2 and 3. For Python 3, it's easy. Just delete it because it's not used. And there's no other third-party package requirement except for listing them in requirements.txt. For Python 2, we need to add a few lines to support setup tools and gRPC I.O. built-in libraries that we just added to app.yaml a minute ago. That's it for config. If you're staying on Python 2, delete the lib folder and rerun the pip install command to repopulate it with Flask and the cloud client libraries. Python 3 users don't have to do this as they'll be installed automatically during deploy. Now let's look at the main application. Starting at the top, replace the imports of App Engine NDB and Tasky with Cloud NDB and PubSub. Most of the constants stay the same, perhaps with PubSub name changes, but add another constant for the worker. Using Cloud Client Libraries requires API clients, so instantiate those clients for Cloud NDB and PubSub right after Flask. PubSub itself needs additional resources for topics and subscriptions. For example, publisher and subscriber clients. Those have different path names and each require the project ID, so get that from Google Auth default. Why this extra work? Well, Cloud NDB and PubSub are separate products, so that's why there's more setup. Realize that you can access them with non-App Engine apps. Creating new visits, querying the most recent visits, counting visitors, and querying top visitors doesn't really change. The only difference is due to Cloud NDB requiring use of its Python context manager when making data store calls. So you'll see new with blocks encapsulating those calls in store visit, fetch visits, and fetch counts. The other change is also small, but probably the most impactful, and that's where we replace adding a new pull task with publishing a new message to a pub subtopic in store visit. The worker function log visitors sees a good number of changes. Both versions grab the work that's to be done and extracts the visitor, bumping up the corresponding visit count. The PubSub version does a bit more work in that it also has to track acknowledgement IDs because that's how you confirm the work is done, while pull tasks are directly deleted. Once all the counts are in, we're done with PubSub, so act the messages. Then update the visitor counts in data store. There are no changes to the root handler wrapping up the changes. Now let's confirm that the new Module 19 app works. Ensure that you've enabled Cloud Data Store and PubSub as well as created a PubSub topic and subscription. Python 2 users should delete the lib folder and repopulate it with the pip install command if you haven't already done so. When ready, run gcloud app deploy, then hit your app on App Engine. You should see the top visitors followed by the familiar most recent visits, just like in Module 18. Now that looks great, but recall from Module 18 that the visit you just created isn't part of the overall visitor count yet. There's a message in the PubSub topic waiting for a worker to pull. If you can, visit your app a few more times from different computers to get a good number of messages in the topic. Again, you won't see any change in the app other than the most recent visits. Now let's run the worker. You can use a browser, but it's easiest to do a curl or wget command in a terminal. Regardless of which you use, hit the slash log endpoint and see the results showing how many visitors were logged. 
The next time you visit the app in a browser, you'll see an updated top visitors list along with the most recent visits. That's it. Now let's go back to the main presentation. Wow, that was a pretty big update, Wes. Uh, PubSub looks like an interesting product and we only tapped one of its features. Can you point me to its documentation, including migrating App Engine pull tasks to PubSub? Well, certainly. Link below is the migration guide to PubSub. I've also linked to the Python 2 pull task overview in case you need that. The PubSub docs overall, and finally, a link to accessing bundled services like Task Queue and Python 3 in case you want to port your app to Python 3 first before migrating your pull task to PubSub. That was a lot of useful documentation to check out. Uh, now that we successfully migrated pull tasks to PubSub, what other migrations should I consider? Great question, and a couple come to mind. Before this migration, we added pull tasks, which was covered last time in module 18. Don't forget App Engine also has push tasks, which we migrated to cloud tasks, and that's covered in modules 7, 8, and 9. We also migrate from App Engine NDB to Cloud NDB here, so review module 2 for more details we couldn't cover today. If your app uses App Engine Memcache, consider migrating to Cloud Memory Store. That's covered in modules 12 and 13. If your app uses App Engine Blob Store, consider migrating to Cloud Storage and see modules 15 and 16. If you want to upgrade to Python 3 but stay using App Engine Bundle Services, see module 17. Those running small App Engine apps or those who want to break up large monoliths can consider Cloud Functions, covered in module 11. Finally, if your containerization is now part of your software development workflow, you can migrate to Cloud Run. Module 4 is for Docker users, while Module 5 is for those who are new to containers or don't want to do Docker, Docker files, or even think about containers. And we look forward to having you join us on any of these journeys. This is Wesley on behalf of Martin and Porter, and we'll see you on another serverless expedition soon. In the meantime, happy travels! Mm -hmm.